been recorded for your information. So we will begin. I will just bring the PowerPoint up. And uh, this is Jane's line when I, uh, in just one minute, get the slideshow going. So there we are. Jane, over to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, welcome, welcome everybody. I'm sorry we're a bit late starting. We had a bit of trouble over the when the waiting room was opening, but it's and but there aren't very many of us. But it's very nice to see all of you. This is an AWL um, platform from AWL London, which they've let us use for this webinar. I expect you may well have been on it before. Um, so there's just our etiquette on on the screen at the moment. Be professional. Be kind. It's being recorded, so it'll be available. Um, almost immediately afterwards and any problems let me or Nick know um, but as, I'm sure they won't be okay Nick yeah what I'll do is I'll just pause at some times in case people are coming in just so you know yeah okay so next slide right um I don't think any looking at it, please rename yourself if necessary we, we like to know who you really are if you're using um, a sort of screen name Please use the chat. We, we should have time for, we will have time for questions afterwards. And if there's enough of us, you, we'll be able, if there aren't too many of us, I should say, we, we can get you to ask them directly. We are recording, we're recording already. So if you're not happy about it, now's the moment to leave and you will get the links and the presentations um, after the webinar. Um, we, will, we will be finishing by half past seven because um, the AWL London needs the platform for another webinar. Um, so if you could, whilst Nick is presenting, as you all are now, stay mute because it does improve the quality of the sound, but you can have your cameras on if you like. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, go over. Uh, I've already told you that, of course, we are now recording, just made it easier for me to do it earlier. But yep. and then the last thing is, if um, I'm a, I should have said I'm, I'm Jane Harvey, I'm a trustee of the Association for Language Learning and, and like Nick, a very passionate enthusiast for the um, extended project qualification. Um, if you're not a member of um, the Language Association, please do consider um, joining. You know, you, you, we, we um, the largest language association in the country, and we do offer a lot of support and events and discounts, which you'd be mad not to um, take advantage of. So if you haven't joined already, um, please do, do consider it. Okay, Nick. Excellent. So, um... I was thinking of a title for this and uh, what we've come up with is how to do PQ, the project qualification. Now, Jane is so passionate about this, as I am, that we actually felt the format of our introduction to EPQ last time of us two bouncing between the two of us worked well. So um, we hope you liked it, too, because that's what we're going to do again. So how do you do this project qualification? Now, let's just recap. First of all, it is student centred and that the first question must be what level you need. Now, what I mean by that is there is FPQ, the foundation project qualification, which is equivalent to foundation tier, um, well, foundation GCSE grades. But in this terms, it will only get you a grade one to three. Then you get the higher GCSE level, which is called the HPQ, the higher project qualification, which is grade four plus, and it goes up in, you know, four, six and eight, etc. And then what we're really going to focus on this evening is the level three, which is called the EPQ, the extended Pro uh, project qualification that carries AS um, level um, kind of standard. And it also carries UCAS points 28. So. What I really want to do is focus on that last one, but all those exist. And their prime aim is to make sure that students develop as learners with a question that they tackle. Now, why, why on earth, if we say, why would you do one? Why would you do one for your students? Well, first of all, <coughs> it's about connection to the world, the real world connection to an area of study <coughs> by the way for those who've just joined i really apologize i've got covid at the moment so i am a bit coffee but i'm actually welcoming the opportunity to speak to some real humans in my world of isolation so it is a pleasure to be here tonight so i apologize for the cough in the background it could be a connection to future study job or workplace just think as well when else in the workplace are you told you've got one hour to do that task more often, it will be more project based. Right. We've got to work on this contract for three months. How do you stick at it? What do you do? How do you weigh up the arguments? How do you add more? Because what it actually teaches is organization. 
and alongside that, critical thinking and research skills. Now, a student does cho choose their own area, air their own question, and then explores, but it can be <laughs> on absolutely anything. And throughout this, Jane and I will share some of our more memorable ones. I've also popped at the bottom, do these skills look familiar? Well, I'd suggest to you that these are the skills required at A-level, but also university, because you are actually preparing them for that more adult qualification. And what would your SLT say? <coughs> You're making your learners more effective. And as I was once told, the tide rises all boats, so it can help every student because their conversation is focused on learning. Now, obviously, um, a lot of SLT, Ofsted outcomes, these are the words that are often at the front of their mind. Um, but what else? Well, it gives students confidence. It gives them passion. It gives them independent um, skills. It also makes the school help be Ofsted ready by the new Ofsted framework. Some aspects of it, such as policy, what is the school doing to improve learners? Well, here you go. Careers ready. If anybody is interested, I could talk about this all day but there is something called the Gatsby framework against which all schools are measured and that is seeing what schools do to support students with further choices throughout their lives and this is it and then also UCAS application ready you've got a more educated learner who can talk about themselves in a more structured way and crucially their learning and hopefully it'll be a way of raising aspiration I am not joking when the EPQ has more than once in my career uh, been the, the, the last ingredient that has got a student to university. And in some cases, it has been first ever child in their family to go to university. And then finally, <coughs> it's about results. It gets results. It gets an extra qualification and <coughs> fewer teacher hours. Oh, I'm just letting in Danielle. Fewer teacher hours are required than the traditional AS, I would suggest around two per week. Jane, is there anything else you could add to that at this point or should I move on? No, I think that's, that's absolutely it. Um, it, it doesn't require as, uh, as much teaching time. Um, and also, I think you mentioned it's, it, it's got the points of an AS, but it's, just, it's um, actually the, at, at the standard of an A-level, so they're expected to... Um, the content is, is, is a standard of an A level, but only half the, half the breadth. It, it's, as you say, it's a great qualification and a great experience. I, I sadly never had the chance um, to use it with my language learners, but I was supervising all kinds of different projects and I could see, like Nick, how it enabled students. It was the missing piece that got them into university, either yeah. because it made them up to three A levels or because they were able to show their particular interest in something. It's, it's really, really good for students. Absolutely. And I think it is more than a grade. It's the journey that they go through. Yeah. Now, <laughs> how would you set it up? If you were asked today, what would you do? Well, lots of exam boards offer it. Out of the four UK main exam boards, four of them offer it. Of the five UK exam boards, four offer. Work with them. We've actually got links in this PowerPoint, not to go into tonight, but for you to have a look. Um, and you can get advice and materials. And I will level with you. I've done some work with Pearson and we've got some um, documents on the Pearson website, which actually go, give you some specific ideas of using MFL uh, and EPQ combined. There's lots of model work. You know, what does a good one look like? Marked examples, etc. There is a Facebook group with people willing to advise. And obviously there's ALL. And if there is need, I'm sure uh, Jade and I can come and do another one of these to support you at some stage. So there are the exam boards, um, EDUCAS, OCR, uh, Pearson and AQA. And as I say, if you go on to the Pearson, there is a section on EPQ and MFL with some suggestions to help you with your learners. Now, what does a student need to produce? The word here is options. There are alternative ways to the same end. What uh, we've got to remember is it's on absolutely anything that can be argued and discussed. Um, you could produce a dissertation. Now, I would suggest, and I'll get more into word limits in a moment, that would look around 5,000 words. You can have a performance. You could make an artifact, and Jane's got to this day one of my favourite artifacts, or an investigation. Now, Jane, do you want to come in with what your favourite artifact was? I think this is incredible. Yes, and in, in the first year that my um, 
I was in an F F FE college and in the first year that we had it, I had one student who wanted to become a stonemason. Um, he wanted to go and work, well, he did end up, he went to help with the restoration of Gloucester Cathedral, but to prove his interest and qualifications, he produced a sculpture as his artifact. And um, that was, that's the artifact, but obviously as Nick will explain, you've got to do the research, the development, the reflective nature and the presentation. Um, and it was absolutely great. It was the most unusual, um, uh, projects and quite a challenging one is it's one of the first ones I supervised but um if, once you've done one like that you never look back no um <coughs> we have a um Afghani um um heritage lady with us I mean student and she wants to do an artifact on a model of how to rebuild her city in Afghanistan yeah. um which is just an incredibly emotive one at the same time she wants to be an architect and she's working very hard so what a great idea for her to do investigation uh, unfortunately it couldn't happen but i was about to go to qatar um before this uh, um, pandemic overtook us and a student on that particular trip was going to do an investigation of how a country prepares for the world cup you know for, with with a qatari twist um and some dissertations i've had some incredible ones now i will give you this one story this is a true story sarah in year 11 she just got she just really loved Lane. She said, I'm enjoying this. So she looked at a working title, how French cinema dominates the international stage. She did some interviews. She went to a university academic. I can't remember who she went to the local. Uh, she went to our film club that we ran in school for languages. She interviewed people. She reviewed articles from the César Awards and things like that. She tweaked the title slightly to say what what um, to what extent can it be said that the French cinema dominates? She wrote it up. She's now at university doing French and film studies. And that just shows one way it shaped her. Yes, I suggest it improved her subject knowledge. Yes, it definitely improved her French in a wider kind of culture. But she then showed the university, I'm dedicated to film studies and I'm going to prove it. And that's what happened. I've had vets do things on the life cycle of hedgehogs and how to save them because you can't do A-level veterinary medicine. Now, the crucial element is that need for discussion. I always start with that, to what extent? I do like the one. I'll leave this one with you. To what extent can a language truly be translated because of idiom? Incredible. But you could argue for and against equivalent phrases. You can really, really have a good discussion on that. But the student is genuinely in the driving seat and it is up to them to discuss, to debate and speculate, put their own views forward and come to conclusions. That's what I mean by speculate in this context. Come up to their own conclusions based on the evidence of what they have seen. Summarising data, stating what that data means and saying what they believe it could mean. So here's what it would mean by a supervisor step by step. Number one, you'd say to the students, remember, we need to give them the skills. You would do a few lessons, perhaps, on what does good research look like? <coughs> Keep a record. But the crucial element starts with the title. Now, it can be tweaked. If they write something and say, well, Mr. Brown, there is no data on this. I can't find any information about this. Well, OK, we need to swap titles then, don't we? It, because it needs to be discussed for, against, etc. So choose a title and then step two, is there information out there? Is there literature? By that, I do mean online articles and data that can be used. You could also do surveys that create their own data. Why not? If you're doing something on why, uh, what, what is the significance of French for uh, um, teenagers? You could interview classmates, et cetera. Um, and you're always asking, is that information then valid? And can that information be used to form a conclusion? And then you plan. Uh, will you use the survey as I've just suggested? Could you interview someone? I've had some amazing people from a, a Red Arrow um, pilot who was interviewed. I live just down the road from the airfield where they're based by an ex-student um, to someone interviewing someone, an academic in university for French film and another one, a scientist. By the way, the scientist did Hyperloop technology and his offer at university is lower because he has contacted the university and shown them what he's made of. 
I was very impressed with that. And then you write it up. Now, if you were to do a dissertation, which is one of your options, just one of the options available to a student, um, it must have an abstract. Well, do that at the end, 200 words. It must have an introduction, 400 words. Define your key terms. What do you mean by French cinema? Is it all of them from the train arriving all the way onwards? Or are you going to use a particular period or a particular director or genre? Then you go to a literature review. What is out there? What is out there? Then a discussion, weighing up what you found out from the literature. Then finally, your own conclusion. And then lastly, it is one of my best, my favorite bits of this entire, entire process. Now it's at the end, is no matter which one of these you do, artifact, performance, interview, or dissertation, the student must write up about their journey and their reflections. When else do we actually sit a student down and say, genuinely, no green pen in sight, what would you have done differently and why? And anything you want to come in there with, Jane? Yes, um, that's that's absolutely right. Um, that, that I think that the one thing you and um, perhaps we ought to mention, or perhaps it's coming later, Nick, is that they they also have to give a presentation of what they've done to a small group of, um, well, either staff or students, a small group anyway, and explain um, whether it's an abstract and introduce your sorry, a, an artifact <laughs> and present your sculpture or talk about what you have um, researched on French cinema and just you know, so there is a performance, which often actually students find that quite. The, one of the more daunting bits, but it doesn't have to be. You're, you're not standing in the school hall, you know, presenting to the whole lot. It's, it's, it can be a few members from your class, it's, but it's, it is. They, they're always very pleased when they've done it, and it is a, a part of the process. Absolutely, and I think actually, if you then start thinking about this in terms of university, you've had your lecture, you produce your essay or whatever it be at the end of that period of lectures, and then you attend a seminar group to present some thoughts. That is exactly the same kind of notion in here. Um, they must do a presentation. It is mentioned later on, but it is a brilliant point to raise. And they are questioned, but <coughs> the student can plant questions, can encourage questions, and it's about a supportive environment to yeah. allow that student to demonstrate their learning because they are that expert in the room and it's absolutely uh, not the spanish inquisition is it Nick? no no it's, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a supportive environment it's very supportive and yeah. it's always been really good fun yeah now if you were going to do an artifact uh, you would write it up but you would have that research log as well now going back to the stonemason that would be i tried this it failed this chisel didn't work well or whatever it be. I'm being oversimplistic yeah. in a non-patronizing way, but that is the kind of content. So you can talk about the rock, the why, et cetera. Yes, yeah, so he, uh, he, he had trouble with the stone he'd chosen and had to actually get, you know, abandon the first um, choice and go for something. It, 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 it wasn't possible to do what he wanted to, but the, the, it was too soft, his first choice of stone. So it's all really like too that, soft. Yes. Yeah, I remember doing some tufo in uh, the Loire with my uh, with my daughter and I could barely do it. I was like, this is hard. And a very uh, good stonemason came along and said, no, he said, you're doing it the wrong way. Watch me. And went zoom. Did it in seconds. I felt totally embarrassed, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then that reflective log is where, again, what would they have done differently? Now, that was just a demonstration. A performance could be a film. I've had some wonderful ones and um, um, the in investigation I'll talk to you about uh, later on because that's fantastic. So the dissertation, remember, needs to be based on research and it needs to be critically assessed. This data could mean this. This data could mean this. In my view, this is what it states. Drawing conclusions and drawing idea. And then, as we've already mentioned, and a presentation. What have you researched and why? And maybe the milestones of the activity log, what they have gone through. We suggest about 5,000 words. Now, a performance, and um, this looks really weird at the top, 1,000 to 2,000, a stroke 2,000 to 5,000 words. Now, that's because of the different um, demands of the exam boards. That's purely why that looks a very confusing number. Um, I would suggest to you a thousand, according to the assessment criteria, is possible, but I suggest you would not be able to get that same level. In fact, I know you wouldn't be able to get the level 
of critical analysis in anything under around 2000, because it really must be, I have researched all of this, and that is why I did the performance this way. This says I did it right. Here's some counter argument, but I don't mind because overall I have decided to portray my character such as this. Now that might be obviously the two main different ballet styles. It's a real passion of mine ballet, Russian or French. Is Russian ballet really more aggressive and why? So if the if the if the performer has chosen the Russian ballet steps, they they, they would be a bit more firmer on their feet and they would explain why they've chosen that it might be appropriate to their title or their performance or whatever it reminds me of the difference between bordeaux and burgundy one is body one is elegance that's exactly <laughs> the same with the ballets um an artifact now do you remember jane i imagine your student did also around two thousand words in his reflective log to properly discuss the stone and the tools and why Yes, I, to be honest, Nick, I can't remember exactly how many words, but he used enough. He, he did a very good project, and he, he, it was certainly more than a thousand words, um, you know, to, to to cover everything he'd done. Yeah, and I think this is why I'm particularly drawing it to your attention, and Jane is agreeing with me. We've got to think a thousand is in the assessment criteria, but it, 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 I don't feel it could be enough, not at all. So you won't get the higher grades, I think, with a thousand. No. <laughs> exactly. Now, what we what we could do is there's another way of looking at it. There is a lot of resources to help you. These happen to be from Pearson, from an e e e um, from an EPQ level. I know Pearson a bit more clearly, but other examples are available. This is about knowledge of the qualification in general, in my view. And what there is is there's documents such as these to help you. Now, if you have a look on this one, this is what um, it would. Um, look like for a dissertation and it will just give you an opportunity to red amber green as the student is going through and it gives the, ch the children or students a useful word count etc now if we go on to this one for an article artifact or performance it could be then the presentation plus uh, or a 15,000 a 15,000 mm. word report or a 12 page sketchbook or a 3000 word report. So that's really saying go over the thousand that you can see in the specifications. And I use the plural because that is what they do. OK, so um, um, that that was just some ideas. Now, everybody asks me, are all projects of equal value? Yes. Yeah, I'm quite good at writing bits and bobs. I can't fix my own car. I need a mechanic. Why is he? any less skilled than I. And the next question I'm going to ask is where language where languages can come in. But remember that report must be in English, but a performance and artifact investigation could could be done. A performance could totally be done in a foreign language. I spoke to the Confucius Institute in London last month and I was indicating to them about the use of idiom, maybe even a model of the Great Wall of China. To what extent was it a success? Well, there were about seven or eight great walls and at various levels, and they could build a model of that. It could be commented in chi all in Chinese, but then vitally, the report to bring it all together would be in English. Now, I, I've shown this before. I'm just going to be quiet for one second and just let you have a read at some of these titles. Now, some of them are obviously language based and some of them are cultural language based. So how significant number seven was the role of Polish airmen serving in England during World War Two? Well, the Polish um, bomber air base was in my village where I'm now and 253 servicemen from Poland never made it home to England now because that was their home at the time. Now, when this is pointed out to the Polish students who began arriving in 2004-05, they said, well, we're new here. Well, no, Polish people have been arriving here for many, many years. And to link to their heritage, and some of them were very interested in history, we've had some great work done on um, contributions of Polish airmen, for example. 
um, as one example of a heritage language. I've already spoken about the Afghani uh, lady that we have in our sixth form. I should say girl, but I always feel patronizing saying that. And then obviously, if someone is a native Russian or Qatari, then um, those things are there to be considered. Right. <coughs> I shall now go to the next one. Your marks are given for managing your project, for using resources and research, developing it and seeing it through. Yes, this is a qualification in perseverance and that review, the presentation, the project and that reflection. The grids for marking this are, are not complex, but actually they, they try and measure that journey that the student has made because it is about their learning and how far they've come. And my review of it simply is this, students have loved doing it. And so of SLT, we're getting more into university and we're getting the results. What's not to like? But actually what I'm seeing is some children who have been profoundly affected by it saying, I feel more confident. I feel I can go to university. It has raised aspiration. <coughs> it can be tailored to their strengths and interests. When else do we say, do a qualification in anything you want? It keeps a language alive. So I know we have schools where A-level languages maybe are under pressure. It could build on languages that are known, whether they are accredited in the UK or even beyond. And it obviously accredits that heritage cultural capital. I mentioned Georgian earlier on, uh, for example. It could link to trips and visits. It could <coughs> take from their A-level and extend. We've seen that with the film project and it could be one of the authors, et cetera, that's used. Um, so, um, you know, at A-level. I would say at this point, it is not, you cannot parallel the A-level work. You can't do that. You cannot use the same piece of work twice. However, the book or the film, that base knowledge can springboard into a more in-depth study. Is there anything you want to add there, Jane? No, I think that's an important point, Nick, because it's, um... It has got to, it, if it's in one of their A-level subjects, it has got to be different. It's got, as you say, sort of springboard from it. You can't duplicate the work. Um, I, I think the exciting bit and, you know, the bit I, I never had, well, I suppose actually I was just thinking now, if I'd been more, if I thought more laterally, I would perhaps have been able to uh, um, get people to have a more language focused EPQ. But it, at the time, they, the awards were very, we're very much oh no no it's all got to be in English and I'm really pleased that now that Nick is or perhaps it was Nick I don't know they have been persuaded that it doesn't all need to be in English there is an element and there is a, a, a part of the project that can be in a different language although you have to write it up in English. Yeah <coughs> I mean what I'm saying is a quote from uh, the lead of one example who said well so long as there's evidence of journey we're doing it practically you could do it in wood you could do it in metal. You could do it in stone. Why can't you do that bit in French? Yeah, exactly. Because actually it's that research log that needs to be done in English because that is the accreditation language of this qualification and of the UK as the base. But yeah, that's uh, that's exactly how it is. And I, I, I took heart from that. I thought it was very useful. And then they paid for some MFL work, which was amazing. <laughs> Indeed. Now that is all I wanted to go through. It's been a huge blast of information. But <coughs> if I stop share, um, it gives us ample opportunity um, to be able to answer any questions. And because we're not, we're not that many, please feel free to ask and uh, um, take your, uh, um, put your cameras on and just raise your hands and keep asking questions. We're here to help. Indeed. So yes, if you'd like to unmute yourselves, and uh, so and it's probably it's just nicer if we can see you. That would be great. Can we? Un we can't unmute people, can we, Nick? Or can you probably possibly can? As you're the I can invite people to unmute. And yeah. oh, we've scared someone off already. We have, I'm afraid. Never mind. Now, we've either done a really good job, Jane, or they're really shy. Yes. <laughs> but let's, let's, uh, there's, there's Lara's come back to us. Hello. Yeah. 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 I don't want to, I want you to feel uh, lonely. We are not oh, lonely. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I'm in the dark, sorry. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. And uh, I'm encouraging my, my, my daughter uh, as well. Uh, she has not, at the moment, it's, she's not, it's not really the right day, but it's very, very, very interesting. Um, yeah, I understand the Nick, the enthusiasm has got because uh, when, you, when you've done this project, it's your own, you have some incredible satisfaction and you start instead of uh, waiting for university, maybe to be able to carry on this project, yeah. Um, you start, you've got a very early um, sense of accomplishment or something that usually you have much later in life. But why not start so early? Yeah. Because it yeah. gives you, and also you can explore a passion already. So it can yes. help you to understand what, where to go next. Yeah. And it's so important. So, so important. Some, some people know already what to do next, but for example, my, my daughter doesn't know, doesn't know. So it's very important to, 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 uh, to take the time and use this huge opportunity. Yeah. yeah. I have and not understood very well. Yeah. Sorry. No, Could sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. What were you saying, Lara? Go and finish. Uh, I, I'm not really understood how it's going to be marked or what kind of uh, grading there is. Is there like distinctions or what? No, what? Uh, it's uh, A star, A, B, ah, C, right. D. Yeah. The reason I said, because that's the focus on the EPQ. So they're the ones, but obviously the GCSE versions, level versions are marked um, A, 6, 4, et cetera. They're marked that way. Yeah. It's marked like an AS level, okay. um, the, the, the one we're ah. talking about, the extended project. Um, look, Lara, the, the, is there someone doing extended projects in your school already? I mean, do, do they run them in others? Uh, not I'm aware of. Also, because no. at the moment I'm on supply. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I'm not aware of it. But yeah, at the moment I'm more interested because I, I know my daughter is into. Yeah. Well, if, 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 if they're doing it, if, if somebody's already in charge of extended projects in her school, it will make, it'll make it easier for her to get start of that yeah, i think because this, this is the thing we we I, i've no idea and perhaps nick knows more than me it's it, i know lots of lots of schools have taken them on but would you say more schools than have do the projects that or than not or is it different? i think it's actually still quite a small qualification yeah. i would suggest about 50 percent of centers some nowadays are suggest saying it's like the old general studies you have to do either an epq or a standalone maths qualification or something else in other words it's the extra to yeah. help them with university mm. which means mm. a number do epq yeah. certainly the case for example at my daughter's school uh, in lincoln for example now the one thing that might be of interest um, um, to you is how it's organized um, now, in my, uh, what do you want to talk first, uh, um, uh, Jane, the kind of time scale when you started, etc., how you ran it? Well, yeah, yes, we, we ran it um, asking the uh, year 12s, we get an introduction to it at around about Christmas of their first year, but that was really so they knew that the, the, the qualification existed. And then we started um, asking them for um suggested titles and well who wants to do it as well and at, towards the middle of the February half term round right about then then we get them going assign them to a supervisor because everyone has a supervisor and the, the, sometimes you start think oh I can't do this I know nothing about stonemasonry whatever that's not the point you know the, the stonemason can explain it to you you're you're assessing the process so we get them started um, towards the end of the summer the summer term in year 12 they, we, we found there was a bit of a dropout over the summer holidays. Either yeah. people ran with it and they, you know, they came back with lots of ideas. So you need to sort of be aware that might happen. And then the aim was to get it finished, the um, presentation done before Christmas, so that staff had time to um, mark and evaluate it in January, February. So it was all done and dusted. Um, it's been submitted to the board and it was, you know, they didn't have to worry about it at all in the run up to revision and exams. Yeah. Now, what we decided to do is we I was telling Jane this, we've decided to do it earlier. We sat there and said, if this teaches independent skills, organizational skills. And it also teaches it teaches independent skills and research skills and critical thinking. Why aren't we doing it earlier to help all their other subjects? So we've now launched it in year 12 in October. 
Mm. And it's the idea of, do you remember that idle time in year 12 where they just want to go and relax? Well, why don't we get them relaxed talking about learning? So that's our attempt. Um, we, will, we will wait and see. Does everyone want to do an EPQ? No. But actually, I think it's right that a lot of them are exposed to the structure of it and uh, and find out what it's all about. And it will be really the ones who work hard, who do, who do well, because there is a dropout rate. It is a qualification, as I say, in perseverance. And I mean that. But it, but it is a fantastic thing for them to do. I've got one at the moment. Brilliant. He wants to be a, uh, a music writer. So he's doing... To what extent has Spotify um, uh, marred creativity in the music in in industry? And I'm just I just want to read it. I, I want to <laughs> see. And what a brilliant thing for him to do. But he's saying, sir, this is really helping me. This is getting me to structure essays in my GCS in my A level English. Yes, and that's what we're here to do. Yes, and oh, and and go on. Sorry, Jane. So you remind me of, the, of, of of Ryan, who was one of the last ones I had before we, before I finished, who who was he wanted to read music at university, and he um he he composed a score for um a computer game, which was it had been released quite early, you know, it was quite an old one when he did it, but it never had a musical score. So first of all, he contacted the the people who owned the rights to ask if he could do it, um, and they said yes, and so he. It, it, I've never realised how complex it is to write a score for a computer game because you've got, besides having themes for all the characters, depending on you know the adventures they have and the options you go into, you've got to have all these alternative bits of music. But he, he was quite a quiet and restrained lad, but when he did his presentation about this and played us bits of the music, it was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, he went on to university, he's now a composer, and it all worked out brilliantly, so there you are to see so it's that little spark so we've all yes. got our my sarah yours and it, it goes it goes around that way that it has made a massive difference um <laughs> has anybody got any practical questions or anything else while we're here so uh, so the um, the time in which it has to be completed sorry i think i got distracted well, um is it, is it two, it's two years or one year one year but it's one the, in one year, so you start well, not necessarily. Off... It, the school can decide when you start because Nick was ah, saying okay. starting so, earlier. Yeah. It's got to be in. I think it's Nick will correct me here. It, it, it needs to be submitted in the March of the year um, that they're going to get the grade, isn't it? So in in yeah. year thirteen or whatever. Yeah. But but the, working backwards from that, the school can decide how much time they're going to let them. They need a good good few months. It's not a you know it's not a quick fix because all that research yeah. and finding out what you want to do. So we found that working from the previous April, you know, right through from April to December was about right. But yeah. you know, I'm sure lots of schools do it differently. Yeah, I mean, it's finding out a model that works for your school. My, my, all we're doing is trialing. So they go onto the EPQ pathway for two years, but actually they're starting in October they will be finished in December and then they do their presentations. Um, and that, patches everything together and then it's submitted yeah end of march no sorry we do presentations in december what am i saying yes, then we mark and moderate in january february, february for submission, submission at the end of march yes because it's internally marked and moderated by um by the center and then it's sent off to the exam boards and they confirm the or otherwise the grade um Afterwards. But that, that the, the, the student is finished with it then when they've done their presentation, and handed it in, you know, it, it's as far as they're concerned, it's done. Yeah. And the moderation yeah. is uh, straight after. Yeah. March. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to, depending on the number you've got, um, it's uh, one of the exam board regulations that it's it's moderated. You look at it, two of you mark it minimum. I mean, that's what we're really saying. It's to make sure consistency of marking. And, you know, I, I uh, always do the same with mock exams because <coughs> I do find them really, you know, I want the student to get the correct advice on the 90 worders and the 150 worders. So we always double mark them. So this is no different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds really, really exciting, but, you know, well, I hope your daughter's, um, you know, well, I hope she gets, feels better. Soon. When, I, when <laughs> I mention uh, that, it's just, said, you know, oh, it's extra work. <laughs> it's extra well, it, work. It, it, it is, but the, one, the, the <laughs> ones who do it really enjoy it because they're, yeah, they are doing something they want to do. You know, if, if yeah, you but... can't, 
you can't force students to do it because in the end they won't do it and they won't submit and you know, yeah. there's nothing and there's no point the whole point is to give them the opportunity and if it's not right for them at that time then so be it but for those who well, i can really see she's a bit shy and she said oh i have to do the presentation and uh yeah and then i I said, she said, I'm not good at presentation, but actually it's wrong because she just passed the presentation for the English GCSE exam. Exactly. And she did absolutely brilliant. And she says, actually, enhance her confidence. So it's another opportunity. Exactly. And, and yeah. you, 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 they, can, they can, at least what we did, they can choose their friend. They can decide who the audience is. They can, you know, they can bring their friends from the class. And there's a couple, there's, the, there's their supervisor. And then what we used to do was invite another couple of, um, the panel of supervisors. So we had, you know, we had some adult, but they, they, they're the only teachers they know. And uh, it's, it does really boost their confidence when they find that they can actually do a presentation. Yeah. And the point is, Lara, even if she isn't good at presentations, she's going to learn to be yeah. because that's the nature of life. And this gives them an opportunity to give it a go. And we're not there to be horrible. It can no. be a very, very small number of people. I've done some, particularly, you know, towards the COVID age with no more than three in the audience. But I think it's nice when you have four, five, not yeah. necessarily more than that, because actually they want to share their passion. They've just spent a good number of months with their pet project, quite literally, and they want to tell you about it. It's great. Yeah. But I know, I know she has already forgotten that she actually really was very wor <coughs> very uh, worried about this presentation in English for G the GCSE um, speaking assessment. Uh, and she did so well and she was so, so happy. So actually she, it's another way really to give them this opportunity. Like in my country, we have these presentations all the time. It's part of our system. Here yeah. it's not that common. No, exactly. That's that's why they all feel nervous about it because it isn't that common. And we, yeah. I noticed because because I was in the further education college, the students who were um, not doing A levels, they were doing B techs. Presentations, no problem. They do presentations all the time. Um, you know, it's it's, it's it, the the whole qualification requires a presentation in virtually every unit. So they were really good at them. You know, they had no. Mm -hmm. Their confidence was really full, but the A-level ones don't really get a chance. <coughs> and it's great that they should do it because when they get to uni or whatever, or work, it'll be a really useful skill. Yeah, I will uh, have a word with uh, somebody in her school as well. But my son was about to do one, but then two years ago, but then because of the COVID, my son yeah. um, uh, finishes A-levels uh, in August. Uh, I mean, it was the end of May, actually. But yeah, had the results in August this year. So he had to scrap the project because of because of the COVID. I don't know, certain schools were not able to actually to support that. It's a shame, but I can see that they might sort of... Yeah, so... You see, I'd, I'd have thought the other way. I, I understand schools made a choice, but it's the one qualification you could do on your own anyway. Yes. He and, did. And, you, and you could, I'm certainly, I'm, well, you know, Nick, I'm sure that presenting on Zoom would be allowed, wouldn't it, under the yeah, circumstances? No. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yeah. I believe just, it's just as a level a level um i did some a level orals uh in russian and french via zoom fully recorded for that exactly, reason yes okay well i i don't know if um anyone else is, is going to ask us any questions because otherwise anyone else no well in that I case then i will i wish you, you can recover soon yes exactly oh, thank <laughs> you <laughs> I will end the recording now. Yeah. Uh.